Hi everybody, it's Sally here and today I'm going to be giving a kind of introductory tour around a Silver Reed punch card knitting machine to give a, a kind of flavour of what it is and what it can do to people who maybe haven't yet got a machine and are possibly thinking about buying one. Um, Silver Reed of course now is the global brand name for machines that were previously sold with the badge names of uh, Knitmaster, Studio, Singer, um, sort of a lot of the older models were M. Peisels, but they are now all Silver Reed. Um, but if you have a Studio Model 700 or a Singer 700 or a Knitmaster 700, they will all be the same thing. So just remember that if you're at some point in the future sourcing parts and spares that it might not necessarily be uh, found under the name of Singer, Looking Studio or Silver Reed or Knitmaster, they're all the same. Um, the model we're looking at here today is one that's still available brand new. It's an SK280. Um, over on the other side of the table there's my chunky machine. This one here is a standard gauge. Um, we'll have a look at my chunky one in a little while. Um, standard gauge knitting machine usually has 200 needles. They are spaced four and a half millimetres apart and um, knit the finer end of the range of yarns. Um, what in the UK we would call two ply, three ply, four ply. It might knit some double knittings, but it doesn't really like them. Um, the chunky machine on the other side, as you might expect, likes chunky yarns, double knitting, Aran, worsted, chunky weight and there are also mid gauge machines that kind of bridge the gap between the two the standard gauge or the chunky so what exactly is a knitting machine well it's possibly a little bit of a misnomer to even refer to it as a machine because it kind of implies um, a level of automation that perhaps doesn't actually exist in reality and I think sometimes uh, people who uh, acquire a knitting machine are a bit surprised at the level of manual input and thinking for themselves they actually have to do when using one. So this standard gauge machine, let's go for a little wander, it's got a metal bed. Some of the cheaper hobby machines have plastic beds. Uh, obviously the metal ones are a little bit more robust and it's got these needles in it that uh, slide backwards and forwards. Uh, as and when the carriage is passed over them and it's the actions of these needles moving back and forth with yarn being fed through an overhead yarn assembly so there's my yarn at the back there it isn't threaded up at the moment comes up the back of this mast through these tension discs at the back here into these overhead wires which bend down you can quite see that I'm doing what I'm doing with my hand there bender and they keep the overhead tension of your yarn as it's being fed through the carriage at the correct tension not too loose not too tight you obviously have a carriage which slides back and forwards and um it basically as the carriage moves across the machine if you have needles in working position the carriage goes across oops I should put this down and as it goes across the through the carriage is put into the opened latches of the needles and knitted back through the loops of knitting that are on there. So um, it's a fairly simple action and um, knitting machines have actually been around for over 400 years. Um, there's a wonderful place in Nottinghamshire on the Framework Knitters Museum which has got some like 18th century examples of early knitting machines. And it's, it's worth a visit if you're in the area. It's quite a fascinating thing. The stocking frame was invent, invented in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I by somebody called William Lee. And she wouldn't give him a patent for it because she was afraid of obviously upsetting all the guilds of hand knitters and stocking knitters and cat knitters. So she wouldn't give him an, um, a patent for his invention. So he ended up taking it to France. Um, where um, I think he 
found some enthusiastic um, supporters of his frame amongst the Huguenot population. Uh, but then it was brought back into England a few years later and uh, obviously gradually progressed through there. But uh, this type of latch needle, I think, was invented about 100, 100 plus years ago. And in actual fact, the this sort of like layout of modern knitting machine hasn't really changed in a very long time. The big advent came about 50 years ago with the introduction of the punch card. Um which was a, enabled these machines to do patterning automatically. Um, on your knitting bed, you've got basically, if I go over here and show you the markers, if it shows up, got my light shining on it, there is a marker there that says A, B, C and D. And these are your um, four positions, working positions of the needles. So... A position is where they all are at the moment. They're right up at the back. They're out of work. If I put them up to B position, which is about there. That's regular working position. Upper working position is used for returning needles that have been put into hold and for intarsia knitting, where you need to be able to lay the yarns in manually. And then out to D position, which is all the way out to the front here. And that is used when you want to put needles into hold. Um, so it's a fairly simple layout on the needle bed. At the back here, this thing is the punch card reader. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for a punch card. Oops, should have got one ready. Hold on. So this is a, a punch card pattern, it's actually one I punched myself and um, as you can see it's this plastic card thing with a whole load of holes punched over it which you feed into the back of the machine there through the punch card reader and it's able to translate that pattern information from the punch card reader through the carriage to the needles of your knitting machine, enabling it to do a variety of different patterns. Um, the needles in the metal bed of this machine are obviously all in the same orientation. In other words, they are all going to knit the same stitch repeatedly. So as you go to and fro without any patterning information in there, it will just knit stocking stitch. And you will always have the reverse side of the knitting facing you. Let me just find a little piece. So here is a piece of knitting. It's always on the machine in that orientation. So the reverse side or the back of the knitting is facing you as you knit. And as you knit to and fro, it just repeats these rows of stocking stitch ad infinitum until you tell it to do otherwise. Now your carriage on here, let's just take it off and hold it up and have a little look. You have this, flip that down for a minute. You have this uh, cam lever on here, here, and these settings around the outside of this dial, which enable you to tell it to do lots of different stitches. You can do tuck stitch, you can do slip stitch, or the J stands for double jacquard, which is a river technique, which I'll talk about in a minute. This bottom one here is plain stocking stitch, or naught. The L is for punch lace, which is not a true lace. It is a punch lace um, used by using your main yarn and a very much finer yarn to make a fabric that kind of looks like lace, but it isn't a true lace. And fair eye around here. This dial controls the stitch size, larger the number bigger the stitch so the looser the tension and the smaller the number the tighter the stitch and so the smaller the tension oh so, there we go 
Um, it has patterning drums on the back, which are these things that spin round. And those are the things that engage with the pattern reader on the back of the knitting machine to actually produce the knitting patterns. Let's put that back because it's heavy. And in conjunction with putting a punch card in here, selecting the appropriate stitch pattern on your dial, telling the machine via some levers on the carriage here that you actually want it to pattern and not knit stocking stitch, you can produce a lot of different pretty patterns on your machine. Um, you can do, whoops, I've got my samples here. You can obviously do, as I said, plain stocking stitch. You can knit fair isle patterns, which can either be um, things like these, the little flowers, um, or you can knit geometric patterns. Um, you can knit stripes. You can also do things like tuck stitch, which looks very, very effective on the reverse or the front side. The choice is yours. Um, so it's an extremely versatile piece of kit. Now, um, as I said earlier, this is a standard gauge machine. Uh, the one thing I really like about these Silver Reed slash Knit Masters is that they all work the same way. This fundamentally hasn't actually changed since the 1970s. How it works is exactly the same as the earlier 320 series of machines. There's a 321, a 323, a 326, a 328. Got the same punch card reader at the back, same settings and everything on the carriage. It works exactly the same. So we'll have a little trot round now to my chunky machine. And as you can see, it has a punch card reader at the back. This one only has 12 teeth in it, not 24, which is the standard gauge has. Um, it has 12 teeth because it's only got half as many needles. So these are nine millimeters apart instead of four and a half. But you've got the same four needle positions, A, B, C, D. they have got latches on them that work in exactly the same way. The carriage is the same, patterning drums at the back. The Stitch positions on the dial are exactly the same. Tuck, slip, stockinette, punch lace, fair isle. So helpfully they've actually put them in English. This one, as you can see, is a knit master, model SK155. Exactly the same as the one that you can buy today. Same side levers, same rustle levers. These control stitches in D position. So if you've got needles out here that you don't want to knit, you put these rustle levers forward and then when you push the carriage across it doesn't knit them, it leaves them where they are. So when I say that once you've learned how to use one of these machines you've learned how to use all of them, I really meant it. They are all exactly the same. And some of the models had um, like refinements added into them. Some have got built-in uh, charting devices or knit radars. Um, some have got the ability to have built-in intarsia. Um, some have got built-in row counters. My one is actually removable. I can take it off of here, move it down the other side if I want to. Um, but they really do all work in the same way. Now, I mentioned a little while ago about a ribbing attachment. And... Um, let me just take this off here a minute. This is what this thing is down here. It's a second bed of needles that hangs in front of the first one. And by, let me just take the sink plate off, by taking that away. So I need to put this down a minute. And pushing that up. I've pushed that up so that I now have a double bed machine. 
as I said, this is all the, the main bed always knits in one orientation and stocking stitch with the wrong side facing you. But by adding this second bed of needles at the front, you can put the ribbon needles into work and you can knit one by one rib, two by one rib, full needle rib. And then it also gives you the opportunity to do lots of other interesting stitches, um, including something called double bed jacquard, which is floatless fair isle. But it actually, it doesn't just give you the opportunity to do ribbing, it actually um, creates the opportunity to do hundreds of hundreds more different stitch patterns. So um, that then quite briefly, there's a little tour around the knitting machine. Um, let's drop that again. Uh, and to finish off, I just want to go in a little bit more detail about what some of the things on the carriage do. So as I said earlier on, these drums at the back interact with this pattern reader to pick up the... Let me just put this in. Let's see what I'm talking about. So um, by putting that card in and locking it, I hope you can see that um, alternate teeth were put into patterning position. Or, and as it goes through, the card rotates. Um, you can't actually see it doing it as it rotates it, but each time it rotates, those teeth form a new configuration. And that configuration is picked up on these patterning drums at the back of the carriage, transferred through the sub drums, which are in here. And then by putting these side levers back, that then tells this carriage to push certain needles forward from the B working position out to D position and to pattern according to the selection you've made on your cam lever. So that's quite a clever piece of kit. And you can join these cards into a circle with clips so that they will just continuously rotate and that pattern will repeat until you tell the machine not to do it. So these side levers on the back here, the forward position is a little circle and the back position is a triangle. And it's the triangle position that instructs the carriage to read this patterning mechanism through to your needles. Um, as I said, over on the other machine, these Russell levers on the front control needles that are in D. So it will ignore needles that you've pushed out to D position. Very useful for shaping. You can do shoulder shaping, neck shaping. You can knit godets. You can knit darts. You can knit segments of circles. Very useful function. The holding position on the machine. And um, as I explained earlier, the cam lever on here is the way you select which stitch pattern you want to use. So um, I hope that's given you a little bit of a flavour of the knitting machine and what it can do. Um, if you have any questions about it, please ask and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you.